Hello everyone. I am Tim. I work for Golf Cart Garage. We are back with our twice a week session. It's Tim Tuesdays and Thursdays that we come here and we get together and we, we talk about the, some of the golf cart related questions. I talk to people in the live chat. So anybody in the live chat, feel free to participate. Feel free to ask a question if you need to. I am a part of the Gearheads on Demand service that is offered at Golf Cart Garage. Gearheads On Demand is a service that we offer where you can schedule an appointment with me. I'm, I owned and operated a golf cart shop for about 15 years, so I have some golf cart experience. I may be able to help you if you're thinking of trying to repair your car yourself. I may be able to steer you in the right direction, help you out there, maybe, maybe able to help you save some money so you don't actually have to take your cart to the shop. Sometimes you're just going to have to bite the bullet and take it to the shop, uh, but sometimes I might be, able to, might be able to help you over the phone and give you some advice. So if you're interested in that service, just click the link in the description and that will take you to the scheduling page. Then you can schedule a phone call with me. I'll call you at whatever time you picked. Uh, you can schedule a video session with me where I will not call you, but I'll send you a link to your phone at the time you picked. And all you do is you click on the link and then I can see through your phone and see what you're, see what you're pointing at. If you feel that's necessary, if you think I need to see it. Most of the time a phone call is fine, but uh, sometimes I might need to see something just to get clarification on what you're talking about. All right, well, we are gonna get started with some regular questions here. And uh, like I said, anybody in the chat, feel free, to, uh, feel free to participate and I will get to you. So the garage is now open, so let's get started with question number one. This is from Jordan says he has a 99 EasyGo TXT 36 volt. It has no power, won't move unless I jack it up. Then the tire spins, so I don't think it's the motor, but I could be wrong. It has six month old batteries, cables, and controller. Well, you got, let's see. So you replaced, I'm assuming you replaced the batteries, cables, and controller. All right, well, what I would probably say then, if you had replaced the controller and it's spinning with it up in the air, it sounds like you could have a speed sensor issue if your car has a run tow switch. If, it, uh, if you've got a run tow switch under your seat, then that means you have a speed sensor on the end of your motor. And the speed sensor can call your, cause your car to, to just crawl very, very slow. So that's what I would be leaning toward right off the bat, but you didn't tell me exactly which electrical system you have. Now let's just say that if you don't have a run tow switch and it's doing that, then I would be leaning toward controller, but you've replaced the controller. So uh, we're going back to most likely you have a run tow switch and it could be a speed sensor issue. All right, let's go to number two. Uh, let me switch over to Facebook before I go to number two. Looks like we've got Sydney Gracie at Facebook. What's up, Sydney Gracie? Uh, hi, Tim. We travel three and four weeks at a time, and I'm concerned about keeping my golf cart batteries charged. I have a seven-day timer attached to my charger, currently set to run two hours, two times per week. Is that a good way to keep my batteries charged? This is, this is what I would say, Sydney. I would say, I wish you had a charger. Uh, I, I don't like to do, I never have recommended intermittent charging. In other words, you're saying you, you, you run your charger for just two hours. I don't like that because uh, the reason I don't like that is because I know that golf cart, lead acid golf cart batteries, they like to be fully charged all the time. So I wish you would let the charger, I wish you had an automatic charger that shut off automatically to where you could you could do if you wanted to use your timer thing on that see if you could make that work but let it go through the entire charge cycle and then shut off on its own i would rather see you be able to do that and then then that would be fine now what you're doing is it's, it's going to help to keep your golf cart charged to a certain level but i would rather it fully charge the cart and then shut completely off and then later on you somehow remotely do your timer and make it fully charge the cart again until it automatically shuts off now you might be running a, t a t older charger with a timer. So I guess what I'm suggesting is I would love to see you get a more up-to-date charger. Let's see. Number two, this is from Charlie. 
I have a 2006 48 volt club card DS and I'm having two problems with it as follows. Occasionally when I press the accelerator I can hear a click but nothing happens. 99% of the time I can release the accelerator pedal and to press again and it goes fine. My real concern is when driving the cart for over 45 minutes at low to mid-range speeds in 100 degree weather it will start slowing down until it stops. I can change direction several times and it seems to bring it back and run normally. Do you have any thoughts on the cause of these problems? Yes, I do. <laughs> you, what, what you, let's, let's talk about the, the, 100 degree weather, the, the 100 degree weather and the driving slow first. That is classic, what you've described there, that's classic uh, controller going into what is called thermal shutdown. The, the quickest way to heat up the electrical system in a golf cart, in an electric golf cart, the quickest way to heat it up would be to drive around slow. And th th that's in whether you had a solid state electrical system or even if you had the old timey uh, resistor coil type electrical system. The resistor coils bleed off energy and they get red hot and that's how you go slow. Golf carts actually run cooler when they're going wide open. If you think about what they're designed to do, they're designed to go Full, bl full blast, whatever the speed is set to, from one hole to the next on the golf course. So they're designed to go wide open. When you start creeping around on them, like you're trying to creep around in the woods, you know, that's when they heat up and they get hot. Now, a solid state system would be a car with a controller. Once that controller starts getting to a certain temperature, there's a safety mechanism inside of it. There's a brain inside of it that tells it to shut down because it's getting way too hot. That's called thermal shutdown. The controller will go into thermal shutdown. Now, normal, just driving slow can do it, but that in conjunction with 100 degree temperatures like you described, oh yeah, yeah you could easily make a, a solid state car go into thermal shutdown on a 100 degree day driving, creeping around real slow. Now that's my opinion on the, on the shutting down part. Now your first part of your question, you ask about, you know, occasionally you hit the gas pedal and nothing will happen. Well, Here's, I think that it's very possible that the two could be related a little bit because I can tell you this from experience, a controller will only go into thermal shutdown so many times, just a certain number, it's not a finite number of times, it's a, you don't know how many times it's going to go into thermal shutdown, but eventually it's just not going to come back. It's going to go into thermal shutdown and it's just going to be toast. So it's very likely that there could be some controller damage from getting overheated so much is what I'm saying. So the two problems could be related. All right. Number three, my 2009 Yamaha electric golf cart doesn't move. I suspect a bad solenoid. However, I have no power to the headlights or horn. Does power for these accessories go through the solenoid? In 99% of all headlights and, and horn circuits, it does not go through the solenoid. It should not go through the solenoid. It should be a completely separate circuit. So you have two completely unrelated things going on there, in my opinion, without seeing how it's wired. But it's, there's, that's, that's a 12-volt circuit, your lights and your, and, your, uh, and your horn. There's no reason for it to be going through the solenoid. So it should just be on a separate circuit, either hooked to a voltage reducer if your cart's electric or you're straight to your battery if your cart is a gas. Let's see here. That was number three. Let me check over here on YouTube. Let's see. On YouTube, we got Ryan Hagedorn. Is that how you say that? Hey, Hagedorn or, or Hagedorn? What's up, Ryan? He says, I have a 2008 RXV and the back left feels or looks like it wobbles. This causes a slight shake in the cart at speed. I've changed the hub and cleaned the shaft, but it won't go away. Any ideas? You've changed the hub. I would say you need to check your rim. I, oh, I know what you can do. Swap your tires if you haven't done that yet. Swap your uh, swap your right rear to your left rear, you know, or you know, and and see if that does anything. That way, you know if it's a bent rim because uh, you know there's some there's some rims out there that aren't the most expensive things in the world, and that they you could have 
you know, pop the curb at one time and put a little bend in the rim. That's what I would do. I'd switch a tire and make sure it's not the rim. And if it's not that, then it could be a bent axle, but that's very unlikely. It, you would uh, probably start, uh, suffered some more damage if it was a bent axle. We got uh, Derek Van Houten. Let's see. Uh, what's your favorite make and model of golf cart when it comes to reliability? Budget cart as well as any cart, no matter the price. Do you personally like electric or gas models? Uh, Derek, I've got my favorites and lots of categories. Uh, I love gas uh, golf carts in general. Uh, I love electric cars, especially now with lithium is available. Lithium has brought electric cars to the to the low maintenance level that gas cars have always been because gas cars, the maintenance on them is really relatively low. If you think about it, all you have to do on a gas car is change your oil, which any gas, any combustion engine vehicle that you own, you have to get the oil changed. If you change the oil on a gas car once a year, change the, the air filter, the fuel filters and the spark plug and the oil filter, that's all you got to do until next year. You can go a whole year. Now, all you got to do for the rest of the year is just put gas in it and they get really good gas mileage. So you probably won't have to do that very often. So that's relatively low maintenance to me in comparison to lead acid electric cars where you have to constantly be on top of your batteries. You got to keep in mind what your battery status is at all times. You got to put water in your batteries. Plus you've got all the other little alamites and everything to keep up with. Now, this is just my opinion. I mean, some people may look at it a little bit different than I do, but, uh, as far as my favorites, I think I've said this before, uh, my favorite golf cart ever produced was a Yamaha Gas G1. And I think if you ask any golf cart mechanic that has, that has worked and, and knows and goes back that far to Yamaha Gas G1s, I think they would probably agree. That's the greatest golf car ever made. It's also the ugliest golf car ever made, but it is the greatest golf car ever made. The best design and everything. It's, you know, it's a two-stroke, but it's a very good car. I have one to this day. It's over 30 years old. It still runs like a top. Craig35, what's up, man? It says, good afternoon, gearhead. What happens if you drive the cart in the tow position? Haven't done it. I'm wondering, 2009 RSV. What happens if you drive the cart in the tow position? Well, you, you, you can't, you can't drive it in the tow position, Craig, uh, or, uh, you put it in tow and the car shouldn't run. Uh, it, it's not going to run. I mean, you can try it, but it's it, the, the normal operation is if you put it in tow, it ain't going to run. You can turn the key on, hit the gas pedal and it's not going to drive. Let's see. Hagedorn. Okay. Ryan Hagedorn. I got you. I got you now. I have swapped tires and rims around. Okay. I see what you say. All right, so you've already tried that. Well, you've, you've, you've did the hub, you've done the swap tires and rims around. So, you know, it's not the hub, you know, it's not the rim. Uh, the only thing left that could be causing you a wobble there would be the axle itself. You know, that's going to be a two piece axle. That axle will come out one side and you got, that's a separate axle on the other side. So you may have a bent axle. I just did. I just thought that that might be unlikely that you had a bent axle, but it, it is possible. All right, let's see. Derek Van Houten have a 97 Easy Go DCS that had a strange thing happen once. I was driving full speed for about a mile. When I let off the accelerator pedal, the cart continued at full speed up until I turned key off. And that is a strange thing, Derek. Uh, that would be what we used to call a ghost rider. Yeah, it's when a a golf cart would either take off on its own or it would continue to go even though you're not pressing anything. Now something obviously went wrong and caused the ghost rider to take over. Uh, it could be some, somehow your activation circuit in that car got activated and it, it has stayed activated. But I will tell you this, a 97 Easy Go DCS, if it's a stock controller, that's a very, very weak controller. And lots of weird things have happened uh, to m in my shop with the DCS carts. And I've replaced more DCS con stock DCS controllers than any other controller. So it could definitely be a controller issue that, you know, that happened to you there. Craig says, cool, thanks. Let me check on Facebook over here. Looks like we're good. Mm. 
number four is where we were at on the regular questions. We'll change something around here. I have a club car, golf cart, 2006, just purchased it, has new batteries. Went to charge it. It ran for 11 hours. It got to 5 amps, but would not cut off. Charger is a power drive 3. Do you think charger is bad? Thank you. Well, I can tell you this. Uh, depending on the state of charge that your battery pack was in when you brought it in to charge it, it could take 16 hours to charge your car. So I'm not going to start saying that it's you could have an onboard computer problem or you could have a charger problem. Most likely it's, it's not going to be your charger. It's going to be the onboard computer. But I want to make sure that it didn't shut off in 16 hours, not 11. And 5 amps, it should, it should even go a little bit more than 5 amps. And if you'll put a voltmeter on your battery pack at that time when it is reading 5 amps or less, you need to see above 60 volts or around 60 volts before that charger is going to shut off. So if it's not up to 60 volts, it may, it may just need a little bit more time. But make sure you let it go 16 hours and up to 60 volts is going on before, you, before we start jumping on the onboard computer is the problem. Because your onboard computer is actually what's telling your charger not to shut off. Let's see, that was number six. No, that was number four. Yeah, now we're on number five. That's where we're at. This is from Larry, number five. What are the symptoms when the solenoid is going bad? Well, gen, gen, this is, in my experience, generally, a solenoid either works or it doesn't. You know, uh, it, it doesn't like you can't tell if a solenoid is going bad generally. Uh, and also, there's this, solenoid is a crazy thing. All a solenoid is is an electrically operated on-off switch. On off, on off. That's all it is. It, it's, it's inside contacts are made and then it's released. That's all it is. So there's really no in between on a solenoid. Uh, if a solenoid clicks, if it clicks when you hit the gas pedal, most of the time that means it's good, but not all of the time. It, just because it clicks doesn't mean it's good. It could be clicking, but only like barely touching and not allowing amps to flow through. I've seen that before in my shop uh, uh, quite a few times. So there's really no symptom of a solenoid going bad. It's either works or it doesn't most of the time in general. Number six. This is from Russell. Notice batteries bubbling. Check voltage across main positive and negative terminal, reading 57 volts. This seems high, and charger is very warm to hot. Is this normal? Please advise. I have unplugged charger until I hear from you. Well, I, I just got through stating that you would see up to 60 volts, so 57 is not unusual at all. Now, the charger being hot, that depends on how much trouble the charger is having to charge the battery pack. In other words, if your battery pack was really, really dead, your charger is going to have to work really hard in order to get that battery pack up to a normal charge state. So a lot of times what I do in my shop, when I know I'm going to be charging a cart that's really dead, uh, I know the battery, I know the charger is going to get hot or if it's in the middle of the summer and, I'm, and it's going to even get hotter that way. It, my shop wasn't air conditioned, so I, I, it, everything was hot in there. Most of the time what I would do is I would take one of those fans, a little fan, and put it right beside the charger and just blow in right inside the charger. And then I would let it go and set it up to charge the golf cart. You wouldn't believe how, how much difference that can make in the temperature of your charger by putting an external fan on it, especially one of those, one of those I don't know if you know what I mean, but one of those squirrel cage fans that moves a lot of air. They're, they're used to dry floors and dry carpet out, you know, one of those kind of fans. They're readily available everywhere now. Anyway, those work great for cooling off a charger because heat is your enemy in any type of electrical system, including charging your golf cart. Okay, let's see. I got Ed in, uh, in uh, YouTube. What's up, Ed? 
It says, I have a 2021 Yamaha gas and it's hesitating some. Could it be bad gas? Hesitating. Tell me a little bit more about what you mean by hesitating. Do you mean when you're stepping on the accelerator pedal to start the engine, it doesn't start right away, and the, but then when, it's, when it starts, it runs normal or what? G give me a little bit more information about that. Okay, you, so that is correct what I said. So you, you step on the gas pedal and there's a hesitation before the engine starts and it's an intermittent hesitation. All right, well, I can tell you what, what I have seen uh, what what part that I've replaced a lot. If you'll look under the floor mat of a Yamaha, uh, I'm not sure about a 2021. I don't know. You have to, I'm pretty sure they're going to be really close. That's a pretty new car. But anyway, your accelerator pedal under that floor mat is got, is, it hits a switch. It's a, it's called the pedal stop switch. It's a big obvious switch that, uh, it's got less than 50 hours. Well, it could be an intermittent it's pedal stop switch. I've had to replace those on older Yamahas. I haven't had to replace them on one as new as yours. But what that pedal stop switch is, that is the first thing that when you touch the accelerator pedal, it that's the first thing that sends the power to the solenoid, and then the solenoid clicks, and that's what makes your starter generator turn over, and that's what makes your car crank. But all of this is supposed to happen like almost, you know, simultaneously. So if you've got an intermittent part, it's most likely going to be that switch or the solenoid is having trouble closing for some reason. Got Ed Boucher in, in YouTube. What's up, Ed Boucher? We've talked before that my golf cart, when I stepped on the, the fuel pedal, it's an electric. It clicks, doesn't go anywhere. But if I hold it down, eventually it goes, and eventually it goes, and I replace the solenoid. It seemed to fix it but now it's doing the same thing again. Well, if you, it sounds like to me, Ed says, thanks, I'll check that. Yeah, that's what I would do. Oh, Ed, just do a regular continuity uh, test on that switch. It's real easy to do. That switch unplugs and you can just check it for continuity on and off operation. Do it several times. And if you ever get a, a funny reading, that would be your intermittent deal right there. If you ever get like one of your continuity tests didn't really quite work out. If you, if you need to, to speak with me, you schedule an appointment with me and we'll go over how to do the continuity test if you don't know how to do that already. Okay, he says, you put the fuel pedal, it's electric, doesn't click, doesn't go anywhere, but if I hold it down, eventually it goes and eventually, well, if you, Eric, the solenoid has to click in order for the car to go. So eventually you're telling me that the solenoid does click and the car go. So that would be, uh, that would be, you know, you know, you would have an intermittent micro switch, you know, depending on what your car, let's see your car, you'd have an intermittent micro switch. Your accelerator is connected to a micro switch somewhere. And it's similar to what the, what, uh, what the, uh, what Ed was talking about, about his Yamaha gas. It has a, a, uh, pedal stop switch, which is a little bigger than a micro switch. Well, an electric car has a micro switch that could be giving you an intermittent problem. Let's see, Thomas Mack. What's up, Thomas Mack? Hello, do you like the Trojan watering system or just the water fill bottle we all sell? Thanks. Now, now this is just my opinion now, Thomas. That's a good question, but this is just my opinion based on my experience. I do not, I'm not a big fan of the watering system. Uh, if you're gonna use lead acid batteries, you kind of need to be a little bit more on top of it than that and that the watering system to me leaves too much room for error now this is just my opinion some people are probably not going to like me saying this that the, the every the watering system the way that it works is every one of those holes in the tops of your batteries has once as a as a hose poking in it and there's a float that has to shut off in order to stop the water all right that's a lot of things that can go wrong with that watering system. And you, you think you filled up your whole battery pack. You think you filled it up just to, to the point where it needed to be, but you, you might've missed one because one of your floats could have been stuck. It's just a lot of things to go wrong. So that's the only reason why, I'm, uh, that's the only reason why I'm not a big fan of that. 
Eric Boucher said the solenoid always clicks. Oh, okay. Well, if the solenoid, you got to understand what that means. What that means, if the solenoid clicks, that means everything in the front side of your electrical system is working. What happens when that solenoid clicks, that means you're getting all your power to the solenoid. But if your car is not moving, then you're not getting power out of your controller because the next thing after the solenoid is the controller. The next thing after the controller is the motor. So if, you're, if your solenoid is clicking, and if it's not a bad solenoid, but you know, it seemed like you said you replaced the solenoid and it did fix it. If you, if you don't have another bad solenoid, then it could be a controller issue. Craig 35 says autocorrect sucks. Where did, where did you say, Craig? I don't see where it, it got you somewhere. Let me go back and look. Let's see. What question was I on? Okay, number seven is where I was at. This is from Phil. The 2018 EasyGo TXT48. Looking to replace motor and controller. Need advice on what to order. Uh, we have several... Combo kits is what you need to order uh, at Golf Cart Garage. So go go to Golf Cart Garage and plug into the search bar. Plug, plug in the word motor or plug in combo kits. We, uh, we have combo kits specifically for your car, for our TXT48. And got different ones that come with different controllers, different size controllers and different motor. And they even tell you in the description, they will go so far as to tell you the percentage of increase in speed and the percentage of increase in torque that you can expect with that combo kit. The combo kit includes a motor, controller, and a solenoid. Now, if money wasn't, a, wasn't an object and you wanted to go all out, you could get the full Navitas uh, conversion kit, you know, if you wanted to do that. But if you just wanted a motor, controller, and a solenoid, then go look at the combo kits and figure out if you want more speed or you want more torque or, or a combination of both. But they, they're, all, they're all labeled out in the description to the combo kits. and the watering system is no good in New England, it will freeze. Well, that's a good point, Eric. See, I'm in the South, which I'm sure everybody can tell that I'm in the South, so I don't, uh, so I don't know a lot about you know, cold temperatures like that, so you, that's a good point. And Thomas Mack even says so, good point, Eric. I don't like my watering system. I'm going to remove it this weekend. Well, I, I, I hope I didn't <laughs> say something bad by saying I don't recommend watering systems, but I just never have. I've never liked them. Okay. Let me uh, see where I'm at here. Number eight. This is from Steve. How much air pressure should I run my tires? Well, Steve, it's a personal preference, really. But the, what I always tell people when I get that question is, you know, all tires have got the recommended max pressure written on the side. You know, if you, if you might have to get a flashlight out sometimes and look at it, but it's going to be written on the side. What's the max recommended pressure? Now, I always like to start out with the max recommended pressure, but it doesn't mean that you have to continue to run the max rec recommended pressure. If you mainly ride around in your golf cart with just yourself in there, there's no reason for you to be running around on max pressure, and that's going to make your ride a little bit stiff. So start out with the max pressure and see how you like it. Decide how often you really have your golf cart loaded down with a whole bunch of weight and you really need to be running max pressure, or, and, or if not, if you never do, then adjust that pressure down a few PSI. Like let out about five PSI and keep everything even, keep your fronts even, keep your backs even. Let out about five PSI, drive your cart, see if you notice any difference, see if you, if you like the way it feels, if, and even let out some more, you know, and, and continue to do that. Now don't get too low on your air pressure, but you know, let out about five PSI at a time until you, until you figure out the comfortable spot where you need to be. Let's see. 
Golf Cart Garage says, great chat session today. What's up, Golf Cart Garage? I think I know you guys. <laughs> All right. Craig says, heck yeah. Let's see, where are we at here? We are on number nine on the regular questions. This is from Lori. How fast should my golf cart go? That's a good question. Uh, you have to understand something about where golf carts come from or, and where they end up. Very few people, very small percentage of the population actually go to the golf cart dealer and buy a brand new golf cart for personal use. Very few, then it does happen, but that's a very small percentage of the golf carts out there compared to the percentage of golf carts out there that spent the first three or four years of their life on a golf course somewhere under lease, and then they hit the open market, they hit the used golf cart market, and somebody bought it that way. That, that's what generally happens. So what that means is that your golf cart most likely was set to a certain speed, especially if it's a newer golf cart, a newer golf cart that can be changed and be set to another speed. Most likely it was set to a certain speed for a specific golf course that it went to or that it came from because the golf pro is the guy at the golf course that is in charge of like ordering the golf cars and everything. Well, he can have them ordered from Club Car, from Yamaha, from Easy Go. He can have them set to a certain speed but depending on the terrain of his particular golf course. That speed is generally somewhere between 12 and 15 miles an hour. You know, depending if the golf course is real hilly, he may have them set to 12. He may have them slowed down because he doesn't want his golf guys coming over the tops of these hills and, you know, and hauling butt down these hills and, you know, and freewheeling into eternity and crashing and playing bumper cars and all that stuff. He doesn't want them to be going that fast. So he'll have the region set to, to 12 miles an hour to where when they come across the top of that hill, the golf cart will not freewheel. It will not, it will not go any faster than 12. Now, if his course is more flat, he may allow them to go a little bit faster. But the answer to your question is generally between 12 and 14 is stock golf cart speed. Now, I'm one to talk, I have a 75 mile an hour golf cart, so maybe you shouldn't ask me that question. Let's see. Uh, for my wobbly RXV from Ryan uh, Hagedorn, uh, could it be a bearing? Well, I can tell you this, if it was a bearing, if it was a bearing, it would be making a heck of a racket. And so if you're not getting any racket, then I would say no. Eric Boucher says, I have a load tester for my eight volt batteries and they start off at 8.4 and end at 7.6. Does that seem to be correct? That actually does seem to be correct, Eric. That's about right. That's about the normal drop that you would get with a, with a regular load, with an eight volt load tester. That battery should drop to about 7.6. It's gonna drop when you put a load on it. You just don't want it to drop down to like five or four, but 7.6, that doesn't sound bad at all. Okay, number 10. This is the last regularly scheduled question. Regularly scheduled question. This is from George. He says, how much weight can my golf cart carry? Well, I can tell you this. In general, the golf cart, all golf carts, I'm talking about club cart, easy go, and Yamaha. There's a whole bunch more different brands out there now, but most of my experience has to do with Club Car, Easy Go, and Yamaha. All three of those manufacturers have been in competition with each other. That's the three main manufacturers. They've been in competition with each other for years, you know, and so they have to keep up with them. It's like Ford and Chevrolet, you know, they, they, they've been in competition with each other for years. So you're going to have preferences. People like something about one thing and, and, and another, but the same thing goes for the specifications. The specifications are, include how much weight it can carry. You know, how, how, what kind of battery configurations do they got? Uh, how do they do their suspension? You know, there's all kinds of different 
designs, all three of them use different designs to accomplish the same goal, but they better be competitive with each other or one of them's gonna just take off and outsell the other one. They're not gonna, they're not gonna make it. So they've been improving and doing that for years. But in general, the amount of weight that a golf cart can carry is around 800 pounds. And they came up with that because they, you know, you add up the, you add up the weight of two big men and two big bangs of clubs on the rear. Let's just say two big men, they're over 200 pounds. So 220, let's say it'd be 220. So you got 440 pounds just sitting in the seat. You got two big bags of clubs. They're probably at least 100 pounds a piece on the clubs or somewhere close to that. So you got four, five, six. Well, that's where they come up with the 800 pounds because you got to have room for, you know, whatever else they're going to bring, a big ice chest full of beer or something, whatever they want to do on the golf course. So you're looking at about 800 pounds is, a, is the general maximum weight that a regular golf cart without suspension mods can handle. Let's see. Derek Van Hooten says, how much money did it take for you to get that 75 cart running and those speeds? Uh, I imagine I'll make you cringe just thinking about it. Obviously, you don't use that cart regularly just for play. That's exactly right. I used to be involved in golf cart drag racing. And I've got some, uh, there's some videos uh, of me on YouTube. I am formerly known as T-Dog, by the way. So if you plug in T-Dog Sleeper, golf cart t-d-a-w-g you plug in t-dog sleeper golf cart that's me on youtube and you'll see there's a video of me doing 75 and there's other videos in different voltages craig says tim was the john force of well not really there were guys faster than me i mean i i, I, I did I did pretty good on certain voltages i have a really good time on 48 volts and i have a really good time on 72 volts but uh that 75 run was on 144 volts, but that's, I could talk all day on that subject. Let's see. Was that the last regular question? I think it was. Total weight is right at 800 pounds. Yep. Okay. We're about ready to get out of here, but before we do, I'm going to tell a story before I tell what this week's tip is. We started doing a tip every every time we do this thing. This this week's tip has to do with this story I'm going to tell you. Uh, when I had my golf cart shop, I figured out really quickly that when I had people coming over and they were looking through the showroom and everything, that if they had children with them, that I had to be real careful about making sure to remove the keys from the golf carts that are in the showroom. Children and kids love golf carts. They love golf carts. And I don't, I'm, I'm talking about as young as three and four years old. Those three and four year old children have been watching you. They've been watching you all their life. They've been watching you get in your car. They've been watching you pull your car keys out, put in the ignition, crank it, and hit that, hit something on the floor. You know, they, 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 they've been watching you do that. And when they see a little vehicle that's a miniature version of like your automobile, They've already know what they they know what to do. They know they've got to go turn that key and they've got to reach down there with their foot and hit that gas pedal. Well, it happened to me. It happened to me in the woods. Uh, I had several golf carts there. Had some people there. We were actually doing a rac raccoon release. We used to have some property where we released some raccoons on our. We had plenty of acreage, so we allowed rehabilitated raccoons to get released on our property. Had a three-year-old girl there. During the middle of the raccoons, saying, "Oh, look how cute and everything." She jumps on the golf cart. I didn't think anything about it. I said, well, she's on the golf cart now. She's, uh, next thing I knew, I looked over there. She turned that key. She hit that gas pedal, went down the embankment, going toward the pond. I take off running. Her dad takes off running. He grabs her out of the golf cart right before it goes into the water. I grab the golf cart and go into the water with it. And it eventually had to get it towed out. So the tip is this. If you have children coming over to your wherever your golf cart is located, please take the key out of it. Make sure the key's not in it because kids are going to find that key and they're going to find that gas pedal and they're going to crash into your car. They're going to crash your sheetrock wall. They're going to do something bad in your garage. You're going to have some damage. So that is the tip. Let's see. Golf cart garage says that's 13 miles an hour too slow for a flux capacitor. That is correct. All right, that 
looks like it's going to be about it for me today. I want to thank everybody for showing up. I want to thank everybody for participating in the live. Uh, I will be back Tuesday where I'm, I'm here every Tuesday and Thursday. Uh, that's, we do two sessions a week now. So it's Tim Tuesdays, Thursdays. Remember that. That's all you got to remember. Tim Tuesdays, Thursdays. I go live at noon uh, Central Time yeah, every Tuesday and Thursday. Now, uh, let's see. Don't, don't forget, you can also get in touch with me through Gearheads On Demand. Uh, click the link in the description and you can schedule an appointment with me if you would like to. If you'd like to speak to me one-on-one -on -one about your golf cart problem, you are welcome to. That is what I do. Uh, let's see. Make sure that I'm not missing anything. I think that's going to be about it. I will see everybody on Tuesday. The garage is now closed.